Everton have breached the Premier League's financial fair play regulations and for that they've been punished with a 10 points deduction. That literally puts them in the relegation zone. Everton really needs someone to help them get them out of this mess and that someone is me. I'm going to become the next manager of Everton but this job is not gonna be easy. Because just like real life we'll also have to deal with a 10 points deduction in the Premier League for the first season. Also our budget will be restricted throughout the challenge. But the goal remains the same. To somehow make Everton in the best Premier League club. Okay, guys, I'm trying to understand how does a club like Everton break the financial fair play rules? Yeah, I mean, I get it. If you're Man City, you're spending crazy money breaking the rules, but you're at least building an insane team. But Everton are the kind of club these days that barely survive relegation. How on Bruh. earth have they managed to break the fair play rules? Bro, it's crazy they've ended up with this team after breaking the financial fair play rules. It's, it's crazy. But anyways, it is our job to fix them and get them back on track. But as I said, it's not going to be easy. Our budget for the first season is only 20 million. But here's the worst part. For the first season, we're not allowed to make any signings. And it kind of makes sense. We've just been given kind of a ban. So somehow we're going to have to make this team work and avoid Premier League relegation, which is going to be even more difficult because whatever points total we get at the end of the season, we're going to have to deduct 10 points from it. So I'm worried we might actually get relegated down to the championship in just the first season itself. Oh, boy we could be here for a long long time the good thing is at least Everton do have a fair few talented players I'm gonna look to play a 4-2-3-1 system with this team they've got Jordan Pickford and goal England's number one keeper he should really help us out in this one Beto up top is also looking like a really good striker 81 overall Danjima is there on loan and I think we'll need him but then there are a few more exciting players and since our budget's gonna be restricted growing players like Onana are gonna be key the same with the likes of Jared Brantwaite and James Garner as well. First season and I guess this is how our team's gonna line up, man. We're gonna play Onana and Garner in the middle. Hopefully they'll grow a ton. We've got Harrison in the team. At the back Brantwaite's gonna start. But yeah, it's nothing too exciting and I'm really doubtful whether we'll be able to avoid relegation. But that's the thing. We don't have a choice. Even with the 20 million, we, we just can't improve the team. But what we can do is hire some really good coaches. Because there's no restriction on hiring staff, at least for now. And I think we need to make the most of it. Ah, but there aren't any good defensive coaches available but we've done what we can first season with this Everton team I guess is just about survival and let's hope we don't get relegated we're making our way through the Premier League season okay we've made it at the end of the first season and looks like we have survived the Premier League that's good okay wait no I think I think my math is incorrect we're on 38 points but don't forget we're gonna have to endure a 10 points deduction no way after the points deduction we've actually been relegated I really was expecting to somehow survive the first season so we can continue to build our team in the Premier League but looks like we really are being punished here the deduction is sending us right down to the championship so it looks like the real challenge with Everton begins now where we're gonna have to fight through the championship it is going to be challenging but the good thing is we don't have to deal with any points deduction anymore and I think we've got a really strong team to fight back and of course get promoted to the Premier League we've got Jordan Bigfoot and goal who's 30 years old in his prime 84 rated. Beto is well up to an 83. Onana grew massively last season. So did the likes of James Garner. If we can just make a couple of signings like say a right midfielder, probably a cam. I reckon we're going straight up to the Premier League and we'll have a good foundation to build on. The problem is because of all the financial fair play fraud that Everton have done, our budget's gonna be limited. So for this season, all we've got is 10 million to work with and that is just not enough to bring in even a decent right midfielder. We're gonna have to figure out something. I guess the only option we've got to generate funds is selling players and some big players are being sold now that we've been relegated to the championship. First one, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We got 16 million for him so I'm at least happy about it but I don't want to be selling these players. The club cleared out continued even Michael Keane was not spared from it. I'll be honest guys, I think we needed to do this because look at our budget now, it's up to 39 million. At least with this money we can make some serious improvements to the team. Firstly, I'm going to try and improve the coaching department of the team because I think that's going to be even more important than signings. Now we're talking boys, our coaching department is much improved this season. But now I think the first thing we need to do is figure out who's going to be the right midfielder for this team. Who can we sign? Okay guys, I think I found a really good interesting option for the right winger position. Reese Nelson from Arsenal. He's 24, probably not getting much game time at Arsenal. I know the championship is a downgrade, but I think from our perspective, this could be a really 
really smart signing. He's 77 rated. And yup, he'll be a massive upgrade. And because of all the players we've sold, we've actually got the money to pull this off. But guys, we still need to get the best possible deal out of this. Because who knows? Next season, our budget's going to be really tight. We've got to be really frugal with the money we've got. So 12 million is my first offer. And they're willing to work with it. Yo, what if I reduce it a little bit? Oh my days, I've never done this before. 11 and a half million. Is this going to work? It did. Wow. That's the best I've ever negotiated on a deal. But there's still one problem. Since Nelson was on super high wages at Arsenal, I do not know if he'll be willing to take a massive pay cut. I'll offer 50,000, but that's a big pay cut in itself. I'm not sure if he's willing to accept it. He is, but he wants his signing bonus. And you know what? We we we'll get it done. I want Reese Nelson at the club. With that, guys, we finally made our first signing in this Everton project, and it's Reese Nelson. I just realized even after the Reese Nelson signing, our squad is so thin. We've barely got a decent bench, no players in the reserves. Man, this challenge with Everton is really turning out to being a difficult one, and we still need to get a new cam. So I'm not too sure about Dele Alli in that position. We do have 24 million to make something work. Ooh, I can't lie. Gibbs White would literally be perfect, man. 24 years old, 79 rated, similar to Reese Nelson. This would be a cracking signing. Ah, uh, but this one looks really impossible. We need to get a crazy good deal on this because otherwise we won't be able to afford his wages. I'm going to try 20 million. Ah, uh, they've counted with 28. This this is going to be impossible, boys. Like, absolutely no chance. I'll counter with 21 million and see what they say. Nah, this is not working. Okay, what if I put Deli Ali in a swap deal? Maybe then it might work. What if I do Deli Ali plus about 18 million? This is my last attempt on trying to sign Morgan Gibbs White, but I want to give this a shout because I know Gibbs White could really help the demon. They're gonna think about it. Oh my days, they're keeping us in suspense. Ah, they've come back with the counter offer and they're just not interested in Deli Ali. I'm gonna try again putting him into the deal because I really want Morgan Gibbs White. Oh no, this time I can't even put Deli Ali into this, I guess. Final offer, I'll, I'll chuck in 21.5 million and just, just hope for the best. That's, that's all I can do right now. We can just about afford him, but then we have no money for his wages, man. I don't think we can do this. Let's, let's try 20 21.5 million once again. I'm trying so hard to sign him. It's just not working. Okay, guys, final offer. 15% sell-on clause. 21.5 million. We're doing everything and it's actually worked. Can we pull this off? This might be the most stressful negotiations I've ever done. Okay, guys, I'm trying to see how we can do this. Should I just offer the maximum we can? Like 47,000? Let's just offer this and see what he thinks. Oh, it's worked. Oh, it's worked. The last bit of cash we had with that, we've made a huge signing. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but we've just signed Morgan Gibbs White to Everton. Somehow, guys, with the limited funds we've got, we've managed to improve our team quite a bit. The goal now is to get back to the Premier League. And I genuinely think we've got the team to easily win the championship, and let's hope we can do exactly that. We're making our way through the championship season. End of the season, and I'm not surprised at all. Everton top of the championship, 92 points. What a season. They're going straight back up to the Premier League. They can now try and deduct Everton points, but nah, nah, this time it won't happen. Everton are getting back to the Premier League. And also, funnily enough, these couple of seasons of going down to the Championship and all have actually really helped the overall of our players. Pickford's 86, which is mental. Sharon Brantwaite keeps getting better. Patterson, too. Look at Onana, 82 overall, and James Garner, even better than Onana. What's happening? Even our new signings have grown really well. If we get ourselves a decent budget for Season 3, I think we can do a bit of a madness in the Premier League. All right, guys, season three with Everton, and we've got this team back in the Premier League. But yeah, the goal is not to just be back this time. We don't want to get relegated. And thankfully for that, we've not really committed any financial fraud. Don't you worry, no points deduction. And I'm looking at our team. If we can make a couple of signings, maybe improving our defense, I really feel like we should be finishing top eight because we have the talent. Better in the attack has surprised everyone. Gibbs White looks insane. The midfield is looking awesome. This team is good. Oh. Oh no, but here's where the problem lies. Our budget is just 15 million. When I told you that throughout this challenge, we're going to have budget constraints, I was not joking. I'm thinking what I can do with 15 million this season, and the only real answer seems to be maybe improving squad depth. We don't really have much depth for the winger position, so if we can do something in that department, maybe it helps. And someone like David Brooks, who's got the Premier League experience, 76 overall, yeah, that's the kind of signing we need to make for squad depth. And there you go, we bring in David Brooks to Everton. Not much money to bring in any first team players, but I think these kind of signings 
players are very important to having a good Premier League season. I think with the team we've got, we should have a good season in the Premier League. My only worry is how thin our squad is, but we're getting through the Premier League season to see how we do. End of the season, and I'm not gonna lie, it in the Premier League, that's honestly really good. Considering we didn't really have much to invest in the team, that's absolutely brilliant and we don't get any points deduction, we can just continue building from here. Oh, look at some of the ratings. Beto up to an 86. Onana, Ghana, Gibbs, White growing massively. Pickford's 88. And look at Beto's stats. He's one of the best strikers in the Premier League now. McNeil did brilliantly and Brooks as well stepped up big time. Wait a minute. What? We're in an FA Cup final as well? In just three seasons, we've taken Everton from all the financial problems to now a cup final. Not gonna lie, it'll be crazy if we can actually win this, but we're playing Man City, so I'm not too hopeful. Let's see what happens and well, well, well. Man City get the win. Not too surprised. But you know what? We're on the right direction with this team. Next season, we bring in maybe a centre-back, improve certain areas of the defence. I think we can start breaking the top six in the Premier League. We're now in our fourth season with Everton and we've got some big news. Tarkowski has left the club. Fair enough, man. He gave it everything for us at the back, but it's now left a big gap in our team. We need to sign a new centre-back. The rest of the team is honestly fine, but yeah, that's a position we need to upgrade. For now, I think Godfrey can do the job, but we need someone better. But once again, our budget is just 20 mil this season. Like, that is just crazy. This limited budget is really holding us back here at Everton, man, honestly. And I don't think with 20 million, we'll anywhere be able to sign anyone decent. In fact, we've got a load of players' contracts expiring, which we'll have to renew, and that's gonna cost us more money. Look at that, guys. Just renewing all the contracts has got our budget down to just 13 million. You know what? I think for this season, we just can't make any signings. Let's just stick with this team, see how we fare in the Premier League. The positive thing is that this 13 million will carry over to next season, so that could help us out massively. And so without making any signings, we're making it through the Premier League season. And of course, since we weren't able to make any signings, we finish exactly where we finished last time around in eighth. Look at Aston Villa winning the league, man. They probably invested a lot of money and look where they are now. Extremely frustrating, but we can take a few positives, especially in the overalls of our players. Beto, Gibbs, White, Onana, they're growing well. But honestly, just imagine where we would be if we had the money to bring in a proper center back. Well, season five, we're going to try and make it happen. By the way, guys, we're getting closer and closer to 1 million subscribers, and it's my dream to get there. If you guys can subscribe and help me out, that would really mean a lot. Season five, and once again, it's the same problem. Our budget's like increasing by 5 million every year. 25 million is definitely not enough to bring in a center back that can win us the Premier League or even get us top six. The good news is, remember the 13 million we saved up from last season? Well, adding that to our budget this season, we've got 38 million and that should definitely be enough to bring in a new center back. But I'm going to be very selective in who I pick. I want to buy a player that's got the Premier League experience. And who's also fairly young, so it's going to be a while until we find the perfect player. Okay, I don't think Taylor Howard Bellis is the perfect player, but among all the options we've got, he's kind of the only one that fits in our budget. 80 overall, only 25, so he can still grow. Yeah, I think we might need to pick him up. I reckon we should be able to get him for like 22 million. It seems like a good deal for both parties, but no, Man City, they want 28. All right, let's calm down. Let's settle at 25 million. This will literally be our first signing in like a couple of seasons. And there you go, 25 million works. With that, we finally got ourselves a center back. It only took us two seasons and a lot of money saving to make this happen. But yeah, just one signing has completely depleted our funds for the season. I think the only way we'll get more money to, you know, elevate this team is by somehow qualifying for Champions League. I think we do have the team, but uh, it's going to require a lot of luck. Let's see if this season we can sneak into the top four. End of the season and we're seeing some pretty interesting articles. Evident valuation surges under myself. That's good because we won't be seeing another one of those financial fair play breaches. But also look at this. James Garner has had an incredible season. And so has Beto who's won the Premier League Golden Boot over Holland. Surely that means this team has had a good season. Oh wow, we finished third in the Premier League. That's crazy. Just five points away from winning the league. And we've done this without barely spending any money. We've had to endure so many difficulties using such a thin squad, but somehow we've made it work. But I'm really hoping next season with Champions League money coming in, we can take this Everton team to the next level. We're now in our sixth season of this Everton project. And guess what? We're going to be in the Champions League this season. But most importantly, that means we've actually got a reasonable budget to work with about 59 million. Now I know that isn't anything too crazy, but it's 
takes more than enough to make slight improvements to the team. And that's basically what we've been doing. And it's working for us. But you know what, guys? I just realized time is running out for us. Our best players, the likes of Pickford, Beto, they're slowly going to keep getting old and start to lose ratings. And if that happens, as seasons go on, it's going to be harder to win the big trophies. We need to make these next few seasons count. And this season, I'm thinking of adding some more attacking firepower to this team. But for that, sacrifices had to be made. I sold David Brooks back to Bournemouth. That's now got our budget at 65 million. And there's a certain player I want to sign. Yes, guys, it's Jeremy Doku. An explosive winger like him. If we can somehow sign him. Oh my days, it transforms our team. I think finally Everton, now a Champions League club. We've got the pull to bring in players like him. It's all about the money though. I don't know if we can afford him. Selling David Brooks might just enable us to make this happen. I'm not entirely sure though. We're going to start with about 55 million first off. A really underballing this, but oh, it's actually working. Okay, what if we go 57? Because I want to keep some funds for contract stuff as well. 57 million is work. Yo, we've just got a ridiculous deal on Jeremy Doku. But the big hurdle is still there, the wages. He's on a pretty good contract at Bayern Munich. I think we do have the money to match that, so we should be good. And he's willing to actually take a pay cut. This is what we need, and we're accepting it. There you go, it's done. It took us six seasons, but we finally brought in the first superstar at Everton. We've had to be so mindful with the money we've had, but finally we can splurge a bit. Jeremy Doku, welcome to Everton. With Jeremy Doku coming in, I don't think our team has ever looked this good. This season, we've got to give it everything in the Premier League, and also we've got a favorable Champions League draw. It could all happen in this season. All right, first time in the Champions League, and we've managed to get out of our group. Would have been better to finish first, but we'll take second. But no, finishing second in the group meant that we had Atletico Madrid in the round of 16, and they just about knocked us out. Oh, that's so frustrating. Look at how good our team is, man. Getting knocked out in the round of 16 is just, oh. But hey, it was our first season in the Champions League, so I think this team deserves a pass. But now the Premier League is an absolute must this season. This team is too good to not win the league. End of the season, and no, we haven't won the Premier League. It's Man City who win it again. I don't know what more this team needs to win the Premier League. Like, it's it's a crazy team that we've built. Okay, hang on. We still have an opportunity to win a trophy, and maybe this is what we need to push on next season to try and win everything. But the last time we were in an FA Cup final, we lost it. This time, guys, we absolutely have to win. We need the momentum from this, and yes, it's Patterson, our right back, who ends up scoring the winner. FA Cup with Everton. I'm hoping this is just the start. Look at the season the likes of Beto, McNeil, Gibbs White and all have had. But all these guys are aging, man. Pickford is 35, Beto is 31, McNeil is soon gonna hit 30. Next season, we can't waste it. We've got to make it count. This is now our seventh season as Everton, boss. Our team has never been this good, yet we haven't won the Premier League, we haven't done well in the Champions League. And with our players now roughly in their prime, it kind of feels like time is running out. Beto is soon gonna be 32, starting to dip in his overall. Pickford's gonna start going down as well. We've got to make these years count. This might be our best chance to win all the big trophies. And looks like we've got a budget that we can properly work with. 90 million. And I think I'm pretty clear what we need to do. You look at this team and you can instantly see the back line is where things are lacking. We bring in a world-class centre-back and I feel that could change everything. We've mostly only signed players from the Premier League. Maybe to win the Champions League, we need players from other leagues. More experience. And maybe it's a player like Eder Militao with his Champions League winning experience. 89 rated as well in his prime. If we want to win the Champions League now, we need a player like him. And so we got through negotiations with Carlo Ancelotti and we completed a record-breaking signing of Ede Militao. 70 million for him. That's the most money we've spent on a single player. It's taken us seven seasons to get to this point to be able to sign players like him. But now we need to make the most of it. Surely, guys, with Militao coming in, we've done enough to build a Premier League and Champions League winning team. This has to be our season. Ah, this is not ideal. Champions League and we finished second in the group. Ooh, but we got lucky and it's Bayer Leverkusen we're facing. Surely we can knock them out. And yes, we've knocked them out. Ooh, but it was really close. It took a 113th minute winner for us. Lazio in the quarterfinals and we just about sneaked through them as well. Again, Beto scoring the winner for us. It's now the semi-finals and we're playing UD Almeria. How on earth have they reached the Champions League semis? Not gonna lie, this feels like a golden chance. Surely we can knock this team out. Time to see what happens in the first leg. Please, a good result.
result. And yes, we do get it. Come on. Oh, wow. We lost the second leg, but the first leg win was enough to send us to the Champions League final. We've really struggled our way through to a Champions League final where we'll be up against Man City. Talking about Man City, what I'm worried about is whether we won the Premier League or not. We did manage to win the FA Cup, which is great. But this is the moment of truth. It looks like we're in the top two. And yes, we have won the league. And by a big margin as well, Everton, top of the Premier League. Oh my days. I'm so glad we did it this season, boys. Because you know soon the likes of Beto, Pickford, they were going to drop in their overalls. We made their prime count. And of course, in the final season, Beto had to put in probably the most ridiculous season I've seen. 46 goals. That is just outrageous. But it's now time to complete the job in this Champions League final. This is our chance. Time to win the Champions League. Here we go with Doku, who literally feels like the quickest player on the planet. Look at his pace. Nobody's able to catch him. Doku, oh, that, was, that angle was too tough. We've got a free kick, but do we even have a good free kick? Take it looks like Beto is our best one. Honestly, I wouldn't mind a banger from Beto in a Champions League final. That would be ridiculous. Beto's gonna go for it just above the crossbar. No, no, no. Holland's giving us trouble and no. Manchester City take the lead. Ay, ay, ay. And also, did you see on the top left about Pickford retiring? If we lose this game, next season winning the Champions League is gonna be impossible without Pickford. Somehow, guys, we've got to make the comeback here. Half time, and I don't know what we're doing, man. This is a must win game. Second half, we've got to be better. White McNeil down the wing. I see that run, Beto. I see you make that run. Maybe a cut back and it's jeremy doku let's go we get the equalizer there's still about 30 minutes left in this game i think we can get the winner too no 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 man city looking crazy i can't believe it how did we concede right there all our effort now could be completely wasted i'm not giving up just yet we still have 10 minutes left what i really need to see is jeremy doku's space and that's exactly what we need doku looking for the cross in no, the cross was awful. We still have the ball, though. We're moving around nicely. But look at City. They've gotten super deep defensively. McNeil waiting for the run of Mikolenko. We've got City lacking. Cut back. It finds its way. No, it's come off the post. I can't believe it. I literally can't. We still have one last attack. Beto. Beto in space. Beto in space. Beto shoots. Beto scores in the 19th. I can't believe it. That is the most unreal finale to a game I've seen. Let's go. Full time and this game is now going to extra time. Wow, nothing could separate the two teams in extra time. Penalties is going to decide whether we win the Champions League or not. Nah, I'm not prepared for this, man. I really am not. I'm genuinely shaking. Beto, you've got to put this top pins, please. Yeah, no. no, he's missed. He's actually missed. This is horrendous. The worst possible start. But Pickford makes the save. Come on. James Garner. You've got to make it count here. You've got to make it count. Brilliant penalty. Ah, there's no way Phil Foden is missing his penalty. No, Pickford. How did you not reach it? Our job's now to score this with Gibbs White and then see what happens. There you go. We got our goal. Pickford has dived the right way twice now. And oh, no. he's still done it again. Come on. And Emily Tao, you've got that Champions League winning experience. We need another one from you. There you go. We've got the advantage now guys if pickford saves this we're gonna win the champions league and pickford has let's go guys everton champions league winners in the most dramatic way let's go enjoy the trophy celebrations but there's more that's right boys it's everton celebrating the treble with their fans on the team bus let's go took us seven seasons a 10 points deduction and whatnot but there you go we've made everton the best club in england and if you enjoyed this video why not watch me fix Manchester United. Now, that was difficult. Click here to watch that.